Welcome back to another episode of Red Tinted Glasses. And before we get into the Five Aside segment that many of you will have been tuning in for, we have, of course, have some Aberdeen content to react to. Of course, the cup draw was made last Wednesday. It is the Premier Sports Cup group stage draw or League Cup. Ian Watson, since I know you were getting annoyed at how often I refer to it as the Premier Sports last week. Um, the, we were involved in group stage uh, draw action, not Callum the group stages we would have been hoping for when it comes to summer football, but maybe a reminder for next season this is not where we want to be Absolutely, uh, yeah don't want to be up your head away um, it'll, it, it'll be interesting, and maybe it's a good chance for us to build some confidence, get a few wins, even if it's against low league opposition, because we need it, so that'll be interesting but it's, um, I'm, I'm getting used to calling it the Premier Sports Cup as well, I've been calling it Bet Fred Krupp group stage as well for ages so that's yeah cool. um like you did last week on the last week's show and i suppose also and um, before we uh, dive into the who we've been drawn against we should also uh, welcome all the new subscribers on the back of the success of last week's show with richard gordon and um, thank you for the support if you're new around here hope you enjoy what is to come and um, especially going into next season when hopefully we've got a lot more positive things to talk about um, and also if you're new on audio and um, welcome along and um, so calm let's dive straight into the um the group and I think it was no real surprise after the way we spoke about them uh, on our last episode that the first team that we were drawn alongside was the team who knocked us out of this competition last season Wraith Rovers it's typical yeah I think we harped on about them so much and about uh, how how bad that game was that we kind of spoke it into existence Um, but for me personally um, a pretty good draw if it's away they get to stay at Caitlin's this time um, and hopefully get to the game it's all gone Pete Tong yep <laughs> there you go you're back right oh it's mine For no you're fine now okay it was so, you that froze at my end you froze on mine so that's okay. a disaster I'll just answer the question again because I think it was yeah. fine until you stopped speaking which is weird literally yeah mm-hmm. okay yeah, I think we kind of spoke that one into existence uh, almost. The amounts we ha- harped on about how bad that game was. Uh, maybe it's a chance to to avenge ourselves. On, on a personal note, though, if it is a way, which I don't think it will be, um, pretty ideal for me. Uh, girlfriend Caitlin lives in Kirkcaldy, so I could just shoot along there. Obviously, last time I spent uh, isolating, so maybe I will actually make the game now. But a chance for revenge, and hopefully we can show the difference from where we were last season to this coming season. Uh, saying that more in hope than confidence, really, though, but we'll see. Yeah, obviously, at the time of recording, we don't actually know um, when whether or not we are going to be home or away to any of the, the opposition. Uh, first group stage game taking place on the weekend of 9th, 10th July. But what I do kind of like about this group, Calm, is there's an Aberdeen connection to every team that we're playing. Um, of course, former Don Ethan Ross, now a part of the Wraith Rovers setup. Wraith also signing Dylan Easton this week, League One uh, up for League, League One Player of the Season last year. Uh, an exciting young talent. It'll be interesting to see how he goes at Wraith next season. But I suppose revenge, certainly for the fans, um, and a bit of pride trying to restore maybe after that defeat last year, because it's certainly a sore point, a low point, definitely, um, in last season. I know you'd obviously like it away from home. I think for me, I think I'd be happy enough with that game being at home. Um, and yeah, hopefully if that is the, you know, the first game we, we get a, a win under our belts and, you know, it's all about building confidence and also building momentum as we um, build up to the start of the season. Yeah, absolutely. We, we really do need to build confidence. And also uh, on another poor personal night, at one point I was on the train uh, going through Kirkcaldy or passing Kirkcaldy or something. There was Wraith fans on the train and found out where I was from and started making fun of me because even they beat us. So it'd be nice to get them back as well. Um, so personal confidence as well as uh, team confidence, really. Yeah, we might be able to also get a hat trick appearance from the view on the terrace if Sean McGuigan wants to come on and preview the game with us. Um, certainly enjoy taking the piss out of you and your Christoph Berra tweet. So um, please no tweeting about Wraith Rovers players the night before the game this time. Well, I can't help myself. 
um, sometimes. I make no promises. I'll just say that. No promises, Glenn. Oh, that's fine. Um, the other team we've been drawn against is fellow North East team. It's the trip to the Blue Toon. The Blue Toon podcast will be on here to preview that game. Another Aberdeen connection, as we said. Ryan Duncan, um, of course, being on loan there last season. Former Aberdeen player Jordan Brown also um, moving into the coaching staff this year, um, as well as being a first team player. Struggled in League One, Colin from Blue Tune. I know maybe will not like me saying that, but of course they achieved their aim and did stay up, and will maybe be looking to kick on from that this year in League One. Again, Calma team, we should be looking to to beat with relative ease. We no disrespect, be, Colin. <laughs> yeah, sorry, but we should be absolutely smashing them. Um, I'm sure you'll love that. Yeah. Having said that, I did go to the game that they played against Hearts uh, in the same competition at the same stage. Mm. Um, which did not go so well for uh, Heart of Middle Lothian. Uh, however, in terms of a away game or at home, for me, the fact they're in a group is actually more of an annoyance than anything because if they're at home, like fine, it'll be a, probably a poor attendance. We might get a comfortable win, but um, who knows? If it's away, it's like not really, it's not far enough away to be like a proper and away game, but at the mm. same time, the travel to it is just an absolute nightmare. Um, it's just an inconvenience, really. Sorry, Peterhead fans, if you're tuning in. Uh, personally, I would rather it be away than at home, just because, like you said, it'll be probably a really poor attendance um, at Pataudry for that sort of game. Um, to be honest, I, like, I think it was you that tweeted, I said, please just make all our games away from home, not just well, because of how shit we were last season, but to be honest, I think it would be more entertaining if we were away from home for all four games. But of course, we will have two home fixtures and two away fixtures. Um, Dumbarton are also in our group. And again, we have the Aberdeen connection there, of course, with former Aberdeen player, big Rangers fan, Greg Wild. Um, of course, uh, shout out to the ABZ podcast. I know how much they love um, Greg Wild. So I'm sure he'll receive a nice warm reception wherever that game is played. Oh, absolutely, as always. Uh, that might be the only warm thing about the game. Games against <laughs> Dumbarton have not gone great in the past. Um, the one at Tawdry sticks out in my mind. Um, one of the worst games ever. Uh, can't be bothered with them either. Uh, we'll see how it goes, though. Should be a win. Yeah, and to be honest, even the last game we played them, of course, in the Scottish Cup, one of, uh, I think it was Paul Sheeran's last games in, in charge before Stephen Glass took over. Uh, Calm Hendry scoring the winner in the 84th minute, 1-0. It was just, I remember that game was live on TV. I think it was a Saturday lunchtime kickoff. I think so. Absolutely dreadful. Um, I think the last three times we've played Dumbarton, we've only beat them 1-0. So um, you're speaking about pas- uh, smashing Peter Head while... Um, I'd be hoping to score a few more goals than just the one against Dumbarton um, when we come up against them. Um, and then also, uh, last but by no means least, it is Star- Sterling Albion, not Starling, Jesus. Um, possible trip to the fourth bank awaits Aberdeen. Never played down there, of course, also with Peter Head, never having played them in a competitive fixture either. So it could be some, some firsts for Aberdeen in this group. Um, preference for you uh, around home and away for Sterling Albion? Away, I think that would be great. A nice trip to Sterling. Where do you go to Sterling? You go see the castle, Walls Monument. Well, where else? Where else do you go Blair, there? Blair Drummond's near there, is it not? I think so. What a weekend that would be. <laughs> yeah, well, hopefully our players aren't getting fed to the Lions after a defeat at Fourth Bank. There you go. I've written the headline for you there. Um, but yeah, no, for me, I think as well, I would love that game away. It's a stadium I've never been to. I suppose similar with Dumbarton, actually. I've never been there. I um, suppose for those people that enjoy going to grounds for the first time and being able to to tick them off the list. And I suppose, again, you've also got that Aberdeen connection with Sterling Albion, of course, former midfielder Derek Young, um, who is now in charge, taking over again from former Aberdeen defender Kevin Rukovic. So an Aberdeen connection right through this group. And Callum will be hoping that Aberdeen top the group when um, it comes to the end of July? Anything other than four wins, it, not on. I mean, I, I can't, still I can't see us getting four wins, it's just weird. I think that, maybe that's because at the time of recording, a lot of talk of players going out the door, none of mm. them coming in other than rumours coming up on AFC chat. Um, it's a good chance to build some confidence going into the regular season, Four wins would be absolutely fantastic after 
what we've just seen. We know the confidence in the whole squad's low, the confidence amongst the fans, terribly low. Just It's not the group stage you want to be in, but let's make the most of it. Yeah, and I suppose, like you said, it's a time of recording. The only thing that's getting me excited is trying to think of the names that people have been telling Richard Gordon. You know, that, that little tidbit that he had in um, last week's episode, some of the names that he's been told. I wish he'd maybe disclosed a few of them to get me um, excited. But, you know, it was weird watching a draw without having Skyscanner open on one tab, booking.com on the other. And I think, you know, as I said, it's just kind of a stark reminder of where we've fallen to. If, you, if that's not being too dramatic, but also uh, a way of this is not where we want to be come next season. We want to have that excitement of a European trip. As I said, I think it was pretty uninspiring. And I think D-Side Don on Twitter said, said, well, there wasn't really going to be anything inspiring about the, the group draw. Um, it's all about winning these games. And, you know, as you to, to go on the point you said about four wins from four, Jonathan Main, regular listener and contributor to the show, said no excuses, no exceptions. It must be four from four. And I think, you know, that seems to be the general consensus, Callum. You know, despite maybe the confidence of the fans just now, you look at that drawn, you that is what Aberdeen should be achieving. Oh, yeah. I mean, absolutely. Of course, this is uh, it's a bit different in, in the Premier Sports Cup and um, our whatever the league cup compared to how it used to be it used it it it, it's designed in a different way but it still massively massively favors the 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 so-called top teams we can call ourselves that we should be going to get in four wins hopefully we can do it in style and uh make the best out of a bad situation essentially I know, I like how you use the bunny ears around top teams because I'm not sure if that's how you're referring to us specifically Um, but (laughs) <laughs> but I, I like also how on the on the other um, end of the scale, maybe uh, alluding to some of the um, way the fans are feeling um, when we put out the, the tweet on our, our Twitter page at RTG underscore podcast. If you don't follow us on there, check us out. Um, Willie Lenny replying, saying he feels it's the group of death. Um, so maybe just engaging the, the total uh, contrast and feeling from the fans. Yeah, I mean, it is possible. It wouldn't be beyond the realms of possibility for Aberdeen to still somehow cock this up. But um, let's hope that things are going to be okay. I mean, surely. I mean, Wraith, we saw what can happen against them, but realistically, we should be beating every single team in this. And hopefully it's a good chance to bed in some of the new players as well, build some excitement with some victories. That's just what we want, isn't it? Yeah, I suppose, you know, the other thing as well with the first game taking place on the, the weekend of the 9th, 10th of July, as I said earlier, is we don't really have a lot of time um, to start getting players in. You know, it's you know almost going to be, what, five, six weeks away, time of recording. It's me just thinking on the top of my head. So um, apologies for all of you if I've got that very wrong. But it, it just shows the importance and maybe urgency around of, because, you you know, you're speaking about, you know, bedding players in. You, you want that team to gel. But we could be starting that first game. Obviously, we don't know who that's against with maybe not everybody that we want in that side. Yeah, that's absolutely possible. I mean, uh, in every window, every team would ideally like to have it all done before the before preseason even starts properly. And mm. that's not the case. And often you see teams still making additions once the the, the seats uh, domestic season's properly started. Um, certainly, it'd be nice to have uh, the bulk of the bodies uh, in the door by then. To whilst we start. Um, getting through those games certainly by the end of the group stages like to think the squad's definitely taken shape maybe with room for another one or two additions but it's vitally important that we do get players in the door get them to gel start building that confidence from the off and uh, also build our excitement I suppose off the pitch too yeah I think for me as well you know you said you'd hope that by the end of the group stages squads start to take shape I would hope it's almost has taken shape because the last game of the group stages is the weekend before the, the first game of the, the Premiership season. So I would hope um, by that stage, we are almost ready to, to you know hit the ground running when it comes to the Premiership season. But um, certainly lots for us to continue to mull over um, over the, the coming weeks. Um, some hopefully exciting content to come out um, on next week's show when um, uh, we've got a possible chat with somebody from the football club and keep an eye on our social channels, both my own columns and of course, RTG underscore podcast for more information coming on that. um, When we get the details kind of firmed up. Um, But for now, 
on the back of the success of last week's show. Uh, it's almost like he was so popular we got him back straight away, but just that's just the joy of the way we edit these things. Um, Richard Gordon joined myself and Callum to take a look back at the last 20 years of Aberdeen players. And we decided to take inspiration um, from another um team that did a similar podcast we realised Callum how tricky this actually is it was very very hard I wasn't expecting it at all I sort of gone through my domestic uh, players sort of UK and Ireland if you like I thought that's fine and then I didn't think that you would actually see different people uh, and then also yeah. in terms of the non-British and Irish side oh boy it got difficult um, I'm sure people will enjoy that yeah, so um, look forward, or maybe in fear, to a trip down memory lane as myself and Callum pitched five players from Great Britain and Ireland and five players from the rest of the world, with Richard Gordon getting the final decision on who makes each five-a-side team. And why not in the comments or tweeting us, let us know what your thoughts on that cup draw are. Are you confident the wheel progress? not confident and who would or wouldn't make your five-a-side team from the last 20 years I think would Enjoy. Would be more fitting to be honest I think so well Richard Gordon welcome along to Red Tinted Glasses for this kind of unique and special five-a-side episode I hope you know what you've let yourself in for I'm really looking forward to it I think it's it's been great fun just trying to come up with a team myself I've um, canvassed a few friends and there's been some very interesting names. I can't wait to find out what YouTube ban pots have come up with. Well, I can't wait to put the pressure on you to decide because maybe people will be thinking it's your five aside, <laughs> given that you get the get the final side. But um, yeah, no, Callum, you've canvassed your dad for some, some opinions. I've canvassed um, friends as well, purely for opinions. We're going back 20 years to so the 0102 season up till the present season. So yeah, I think. All of us have done a bit of canvassing. So, Callum, we're going to start with the Great Britain and Ireland squad. So why don't you kick off with your nomination for the goalkeeper? Now, uh, for the goalkeeper, I thought for me it was fairly straightforward. Um, obviously, we've got a very good goalkeeper right now. We've had a couple decent ones over the years, but there's one player that sticks out in my mind. And it was he was only here for a short spell, all loan from Liverpool. I'm going with Welsh International. Let's not forget that. Danny Ward he's my pick I just think he's pretty good with his feet uh, an international goal not so long ago might um, sort of ruin those rumours but I just think his experience uh, in big games as well he would be my goalkeeper pick Yeah uh, he was definitely on my nomination I was kind of going to uh, wind uh, Richard up and nominate Robbie Winters and just say I'm playing <laughs> uh, running keeper instead and um, Former guest of the show, David Priest, was also on my nominations as well. You know, a bit of a crazy man um, and certainly maybe scare the, the opposition as they're charging towards. But despite maybe not having had the best season um, this season, his percentage, I know his save percentage has been much talked about on his day, though. Probably one of the best keepers that I remember outside of Danny Ward, because, yes, he did have a good time here. Uh, my nomination is going to be Joel Lewis. Right. So I just decide which of the two... Goes into yeah. the team. Okay. No but, pressure. I mean, certainly Danny Ward was was one of the names that I thought about. Um, and we have had some wonderful goalkeepers over the years and a few howlers as well. But <laughs> which we'll come on to. <laughs> <laughs> I, just down to longevity. And and yes, he's maybe dipped a bit this season, but over the piece consistency. I've got to go for Joe Lewis. He's he's got to be the goalkeeper. Yeah, I think, yeah, you're right. Longevity does probably count in his favour, but it's, I think many Aberdeen fans will always think, what if, around Danny Ward that yeah. January, if he if he didn't go back to Liverpool. But well, it's one to me. Callum, over to defence. Are you going to go for one defender or two defenders? Uh, I'm going to go with one defender. Uh, I'm glad you've said, you know, it's already one pick to you. So mm -hmm. not that you're kind of keeping track or anything like Absolutely. that. Absolutely. At all. <laughs> Uh, but just the one defender for me. And there's been a few pretty good ones over the years. I'll keep my you know players that I've just missed out to myself because you maybe will pick them uh, down the line. But I'm picking Russell Anderson as my defender. I just think in a five-a-side game, absolute winner, um, Russell Anderson. Obviously went on to win the League Cup with us after coming back 
and returning to the Granite City. I think he's been willing to put his life on the line, maybe not offer so much going forward, but a nice calm head at times too, an absolute battler. And that is my pick for the defender, Russell Anderson. Glenn? Well, I'm going to go... I know there's going to be people shouting about names that we could or should have had in. I'm going to also go down the former captain route and... Oh, is this going to annoy me or not? I'm going to go with Graham Shinney because he can play left back, but he can also be a bit dynamic, get into midfield. It's five aside. You need that energy in your team. Russell Anderson wasn't exactly the most energetic. Will that affect him as the game goes on? I'm going to go with Graham Shinney instead. But Don't envy Richard on this one, that's for uh, sure. Well, the only thing that I'm banking on is that Callum has had the sense to put Graham Shinney into the team further up the pitch, the very small five-a-side pitch. Well, you would be giving me too much credit. <laughs> yeah. Oh, my God. Um, yeah. But if he doesn't get picked for defence, we can put him in midfield later. Yeah. Right. I, I've got to go with Russell because yeah. I, I'm just not leaving a legend. Like I mean, if, you, if I think back to in all the years, since the glory days, there are very few players that are put at that kind of level, and Russell is one of them. Uh, and so there's no way, quite apart from being a, a wonderful servant of the club, he's just a brilliant guy. And mm. so I am not leaving Russell Anderson out. He was in my team, he was in all my pals' teams, so Russell Anderson definitely takes that place. Yeah, and I think you were you also had Scott McKenna um, on your list of centre backs, I was just going for midfielders that had pace and could also defend. That was my logic. Go, just no nonsense defending straight out the window. Well, I respect that to a sense, but um, you, you know you've got to have someone in there. You'll just be a nice, calm head at the back, and he'll you know keep the ship nice and steady uh, in this five-a-side team that won't do anything in real life. But that's what I'm going with anyway. Um, in terms of midfielders, I've sort of gone away from the um, sort of tough players I've gone for my first midfield pick it's not Graham Shinney I'm sorry Richard I'm going with Ryan Christie and although he's with us for a short time we all know what he can do I think he can be very tricky and skillful on that five side pitch as well uh, very good in sort of tight spaces uh, he does have a little bit of a nasty edge to him too a good eye for goal uh, which we saw, you know, in a red shirt and unfortunately in a green and white hooped one. So that's why I've selected Ryan Christie as my first midfielder. Okay, well, in response, this is where my um, sensible midfield head came in. That a player that can do both is Scott Severin. Just that midfield linchpin um, during the Jimmy Calderwood era, era that pinged balls left, right and centre and also scorer of some cracking goals, namely against Hibs and Rangers at Pataudry. Right. I, I mean, the two of those <laughs> were, were the first two names that didn't make the five that I came up with. And I've got to say, I am completely torn between the two of them. I thought Seve was, was fantastic for us. I loved Scott Severin. I also loved Ryan Christie. Very different types of players. <sighs> I'm going for Savy. I'm going for Scott Severin. I think that's think that's fair. It's two two contrasting players, but obviously, Callum, you can still add your attacking flair if you want to this team. Have you got a second pick for a midfielder or are you going to go with two strikers instead? I do have a second pick for a midfield and it would have been interesting to include him had Christie gone into the side. But now that we've got Joe Lewis... We've got Russell Anderson and Scott Seven in the bar. You've got that defensive work rate in there. They mm -hmm. are nice and physical, exactly what you want in a five-side team. So that's why I think there has to be room for James Madison in this. Probably the best. Mm. Okay, he was only here a short time, but the most technically gifted player I can remember seeing at Aberdeen in my short time. Sorry, Glenn and Richard, uh, sporting Aberdeen. <laughs> I just can't see how you can exclude him when you've excluded Ryan Christie now. You've got the Warriors in there already. You need a maverick, someone that will just make things happen in there. And that's why I've gone James Madison. Uh, I'm torn between two. Um, brilliant all-round guy and 
top interview if you haven't checked out already Jamie Smith um, I, I really want to put him in the team but since Richard's already picked Seve I'm going to go with Barry Nicholson because just how well those two worked Barry Nicholson's got that energy so if you have Seve sitting you'll just let Barry Nicholson bomb up and down could also score vital goals earmark that goal he scored famously at Tynecastle which all but secured cured our European football um, that, that season and yeah just just for a player that I absolutely loved when he replaced I know it was maybe a few years difference but I was a big fan of Paul Sheeran when I was growing up and then moving on to Barry Nicholson probably the player that you know most people of that kind of era growing up supporting Aberdeen were maybe wanting to be in the playground well, I did anyway. So I'm going to put put uh, Barry Nicholson up against James Madison. What a um, matchup! Well, 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 never having fallen into the category of wanting to be Barry Nicholson in the playground. <laughs> no. um, I love Barry. I thought he was fantastic. James Madison was there for a very brief period of time, and actually, I think tailed off a fair bit towards the end yes. of his very brief time. Threw his toys out the pram when he wasn't playing. He so did. you can't have that attitude in the team. Um, By the side, Glenn. <laughs> well, the one thing, we're not going to get any 25-yard free kicks for him mm. to ping into the top corner. Um, no, I'm going for Barry. Going for Barry <sighs> Nicholson. Yes, Barry here Nicholson. we go. I cannot believe how different this team is to <laughs> the team that I chose and most of my mates chose. I think we should hear yours after. At the yeah, end I think that would be a good good idea as well. So that leaves one place. and But there's going to be no debate about this, surely. Well, we both picked, well, I knew we'd both pick the same person, but I do have a counter to who Callum, I believe, will nominate. So... We'll we'll see who who the two people debate. I am going to select Adam Rooney as my striker. Um, eighty-seven goals and one hundred ninety-seven appearances. Imagine how many goals he'd score with the amount of chances you get in five sides. How clinical he is. Maybe not you know the most mobile. You might you might not say, but in terms of just putting the ball in the net. And especially since you're not going to have anyone to create for him now that there's no James Madison or Ryan Christie, <laughs> I've gone for Adam Rooney. I did sort of think about Niall McGinn maybe as my striker, but I mm. thought a little bit, maybe a little bit lightweight, might not be able to um, you know, last the whole game. I've gone Adam Rooney as my selection. Uh, no room for Niall McGinn's stepovers in this team. To counter Adam Rooney, I have gone for Scott Booth. 43 goals in 162 appearances for Aberdeen during the 90s, but came back and played for Aberdeen in the 2003-04 ski season, scoring eight times in 21 games. Not only has he played for Aberdeen, he's gone and gained experience in Europe playing, albeit briefly, for Borussia Dortmund, but also loads of games under his belt for FC20. His club record stands at one goal every three games. And Richard, if that is not good enough for you, what about his international record? Don't really see much on that on Adam Rooney's CV. One goal every two and a half games for his country, bagging eight at under-21 level and six for the first team. <laughs> Callum didn't need to go any further than I'm going for Adam Rooney. <laughs> ah, well. like, Rooney was great, but but not in the time frame. Um, better when he was younger, I think. Had a more productive spell with us. But no one is displacing Adam Rui from that team. I think I think that was always going to be the case. I had to fight somebody's corner and I went with Scott Booth. That was a good... I tell you, you dragged that out. I completely... I well, just completely slipped my mind in terms of Scott coming back. But um, no, nah, Adam Rui, all day long. I think, I think most people, that would be the first name on the team sheet um, as well. So um, that makes up the... Great, bit, Great Britain and Ireland five aside as chosen by Richard. Based on our nominations, we have Joe Lewis in goals, Russell Anderson, Scott Severin, Barry Nicholson and Adam Rooney. So, Richard, how different is that five aside to this five aside that you went with? 
it's two different. Um, so <laughs> I went with Lewis, Anderson, Shinney, McGinn, and Rooney. Mm. And actually, my son did exactly the same. One of my pals had Hayes in for McGinn, and um, Liam McLeod had McNaughton, Kevin McNaughton in the team. He had gone Lewis, McNaughton, Anderson, Shinney, Rooney. So there was very little um, discrepancy. And yeah. so you guys came up with a few names that, that I wouldn't have considered. Yeah, Kev McNaughton was also on, on my list as well of, of, of defenders, um, notably along with Chris Clark as well, because I did I yeah. was a big fan of Chris Clark as well. Um, yeah, there's a, certainly a lot more to choose from uh, in the, the Great Britain and Ireland squad. So I think the next squad that we're going to come on to, which is a rest of the world um, five, um, I'll be interested to see how much our squads differ from Richard's squad um, as we progress into this. So, Callum, will I will I kick off the rest of the world? Be my guest. Well, obviously, we'll start at the back, and it's a, a goalkeeper. I think it's the clear and obvious choice. It's got to be Peter Keir, obviously the last Aberdeen player to represent a national side at the World Cup, but. Given who he's up against, I, I don't think I need to explain <laughs> explain much further. You didn't fancy Burton Boston? <laughs> well, I did consider Dan Swardzik and David Gonzalez, but that game against Dunfermline that David Gonzalez played in, albeit I think he did get a fingertip to deny us losing that under Craig Brown, um, both um, give me the fear. So, yeah, um, Peter Keir for me. Well, I... Don't remember Peter Keir whatsoever because <laughs> once again I am extremely uh, younger than both of you two. I just thought I'd get that in there because I'm losing this battle. Um, <laughs> my dad suggested him. To be fair, I have nothing to go off, unfortunately. So that left only one reasonable competitor for me, <laughs> um, which is the great Thomas Cherney, and that's mainly because we could then chant the song uh, "Shalala Thomas Cherney" from the side. Um, there wasn't much to go off. We didn't. He didn't play a lot, but that was the only other alternative. There really was of any credibility whatsoever. Yeah, I mean, I mean, in terms of his Aberdeen career, there wasn't a lot to go off. Full stop. Um, given that we barely saw him on the pitch. No, I mean, it's it's has to be Peter Keir. Uh, yeah, he was he was a he was a very good goalkeeper actually. Um, mm-hmm. so he didn't come up against much opposition. It has to be said in the past twenty years. No. But, wow. Yeah, in fact, um, I was delighted when I discovered that he had still been. Yeah, so was I. Within the time frame, Other, otherwise the Irish were going to be included in the the rest <laughs> of the world eleven because Danny Rogers would have had to get a yeah. vote. Although, um, as one of my mates did point out, you could have chosen Aaron Lennox, and um, the young keeper oh. um, who is Australian, but I don't actually recall if he's ever had many first team minutes. So, um, was, was it was he? Did he play in that Ross County game where we lost four 0 I think he might have because we ended up with Adam Collin and then he was rubbish. Oh, and wow. then I think we put Aaron Lennox in um, for a game and I think that was at it. And then he ended up at Wraith. I'm not sure where he is now. He might still be on their books, but mm. there we go. Um, now we get into defenders. Um, now this is going to be the interesting thing because as me and Callum spoke pre-recording or pre-Richard joining us, a lot of the f- rest of the world defenders are maybe predate Callum's time. So yes, I did need to speak to one of my former colleagues, James Duncan, um, around this. I asked him to give me an opinion between Thomas Solberg and Kato Guntveit. Um, I remember both briefly, and he said purely for his song, um, he would go with Thomas Solberg. So that'll be my nomination, the Norwegian who played 63 times for the Dons. <laughs> Richard covering his face in absolute fear. Obviously, he's sent off in the 2000 League Cup final as well. But, um, Callum, who's your counter to Thomas Solberg? Well, um, I've been reminded recently of Yomo Ene's existence on Twitter mm. not so long ago. And it was Preston fans mentioning that he should have gone on to play in the Premier League. So that was basically the only option I had other than... Carrie Arneson, who always had two spells at Aberdeen. Um, <laughs> Huge sigh of relief coming from Richard. He doesn't have to pick between Ewan Moeni and Thomas Solberg. That would be great. But, uh, you know, Carrie Arneson, some mixed success. Um, I don't know if he quite got along with him because when he, when he ended up coming back to us. But, mm. you know, he's big, physical. Uh, he's 
capable going forward, having played in the midfield as well. Loves a long range strike, which you know people at five sides also do love. And um, that's why I've selected him, and definitely not because the only other option in my book was Yoba Weni. <laughs> well, I also did have down Kevin Rutkovic and Michael Hector as well, the Jamaican international. Again, going down Callum's route of just looking at lone players. <laughs> right. Well, what a rich seam you sowed there. Um, <laughs> nah, it's got to be Carrie Arneson. Um, Thomas Solberg was awful. <laughs> well, I vaguely remember him. I was like, as I said, 2001 2 was my first season supporting Aberdeen. So, very early memories of that team. I, I think he did have a spell actually when he was okay. But I, my, the moment I think about Thomas Solberg, it is a bit, it's Mark Viduga destroying him at mm. Celtic Park in, I think that was the 6 0 game. Um, no, it, uh, no, 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 no. So, <laughs> all, day long, all day long, carry on. I'll take that. Yeah. Well, that does mean, now, obviously, this is mean Calm did kind of have a wee discussion on who we have. I'm going to move one of my midfielders I did have down as a defender into there. But my first nomination for midfield is probably the first international player from outside the UK that came to Aberdeen that I really took notice of and was a class above, maybe underrated at times, um, but certainly went on to do bigger and better things once he left Aberdeen. It's got to be Marcus Heikkinen. I actually had him in my selection as well. Um, I remember just liking his name, first of all, uh, because I was a young child. But I do remember uh, watching him play, and my dad um, was very fond of him, always described him as simply too good for Aberdeen at the time. Uh, I think we're, I'm just going to be in agreement in that one rather than um, throw Johan Foley in there. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a wise choice. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, Marcus Heikkinen was in my team all, again, um, just automatic. As soon yeah. as I began to think about some of the um, the foreign players uh, and the ones that had made any kind of positive impact, um, yeah, definitely. Definitely, uh, he's in the team. Yeah. Um, and I think this is going to be a, a foregone conclusion because I know who Calm's going to put up against this, but... Um, since he didn't leave and go play for Rangers, uh, I'm going to nominate the Torre Sandwich, as we he was known amongst our friend group, Kareem Tuzani, Ajax Academy, close to a one and a half million move to PSV Eindhoven until injury ruined that. Under 21 caps for the Dutch national side. Harshly, I think, considered for the Don's Worst 11 uh, in a previous um, episode done. I think for me, I always thought he was a bit underrated uh, and I was always a big fan of him. So Kareem Tuzani for me gets my second nomination. I'm not sure about his inclusion, but I did quite <laughs> like Kareem Tuzani. Um, I seem to remember it. For some reason, I always described it as a backwards header he scored against Hearts. As a child, that's how I remember describing it as that. Um, it could have no basis whatsoever. And I do now realise it was a very long time ago and I was an idiot child. But my midfield... I'm going to put forward a man that will cause controversy, I'm sure, um, based on who he played for later in his career. But he was tricky. He would be very, very exciting and full of energy. I'm going with Sonny Aluko, Nigerian international. Um, he would be my selection. Provide a good goal threat in five sides as well. I'm sure he'd be a right handful. Sonny Aluko. Sorry, Glenn. I know you're disappointed about that one. Went to Glasgow Rangers and won nothing, though. <laughs> well, in that case, we can forgive him, can't we? Given that he won nothing. Um, wow. I, I thought he was, um, for a period of time, he was he was just wonderful. Yeah. Played, played mm -hmm. in some very big games, scored some important goals. Um, Kareem Tuzani wasn't a name that I'd come up with when my father <laughs> Big Trev. He, he put him in the team and I kind of looked back and thought, he was. He was actually, clearly, he was uh, a very good player, but... I think for a five-a-side team, um, and given that we've got Cary Arneson and Marcus Heikinen in there, mm. I think we need to add a little bit of flair. So I'm going with Sonia Luko. Yeah, I think yeah, it was always going to be a tough one for for Kareem to to win, but 
I'm glad someone else was on the same level uh, and nominated him for, for, for their team. But uh, striker is, again, we're very ah. thin, on, thin on the ground. Um, and I know... I, I know who I want to nominate, um, but I'll I'll leave Calm to counter. I'm gonna go with this season's because God knows where we would be without him this season. Maybe won't work um as much because we, we've seen this season he hasn't worked as much on his own. He needs that support. And hopefully, based on the inclusion of Shone Aluko and Marcus Heikinen, they can provide the balls for Christian Ramirez to bang in the goals for the rest of the world five aside team. Yeah, I think that's a very, very fair conclusion. I'm looking through the list, um, there wasn't too many other options. I think Adam Rooney would have probably been a shoe in for this had <laughs> Ireland been included in the rest of the world as well. So he's guaranteed a game at five sides, <laughs> no matter what it turns out. Um, I thought Rory Fallon, absolutely not. Um, David Zrilich, absolutely not. Um, Eugene Daddy was considered. But absolutely not. <laughs> to be fair, I played against Eugene Daddy in a charity game. And yes, he only scored five goals for the club, but what a nuisance he is. Yeah. So I could see how annoying he would be at five aside. True. If the ball just gets pinged up to him, it bounces off him, and then Arneson whacks it in from range, that would be okay. Yeah, but and judging by Richard's reaction, that's not the player you should be nominating up against Christian Ramirez. Just as well, it's not. It is... 11 goals and 40 appearances. No, maybe not prolific, but the exciting, energetic, cult hero that played in the 0102 season, Hit Cham Zero Alley. That is my selection because, well, we're thin on the ground, baby. Yeah. Yeah, no, we can't exactly score screamers from the halfway line like Rory Fallon did against Hibs in, in five aside. But yeah, Zero Ali was definitely one I was considering purely because I can still remember the back flips or front flips that he did when he scored in that, that first game I ever went to at Patoja when Aberdeen beat Motherwell 4-2. Um, that would be exciting at goals. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um. Right, I, certainly um, I wasn't Hisham Zero Ali's biggest fan. Um, mm. For I mean, I appreciated the skill and obviously he, he he excited the fans. There were aspects to his game that I didn't like. I didn't like the diving um, and mm. there was a fair bit of that going on. Um, but he did get votes from certainly a few of my pals. Um, I mean, for me, it was just it was Christian Ramirez all day long. Um, if you're looking for a, if I'm put, if I'm looking for any kind of comparison to the GB in Ireland team, I want a goal scorer. Mm. Um, and he's not in Adam Rooney's class. He's nowhere mm. near it. But he has been, by some distance, our most dependable goal scorer from open play this season. Mm-hmm. I think that team creates chances. I'm going to go with Christian Ramirez. King of USA gets the vote over the King of Morocco. Yeah, I, yeah, I think that is, I think that's very fair. I think Zero Ali is probably the only realistic opposition to Christian Ramirez. But going by how Adam Rooney was included in this side, I can certainly yeah totally understand. Well, he, he if he gets a lot of chance at five sides, I'm sure Christian Ramirez would be flying, absolutely flying. Yeah. Yeah, if you were wanting someone that was going to be good in the dressing room, I'm sure Eugene Daddy would have got the vote um, <laughs> in, in, instead. But but Richard, that is the team that you've picked based on our nominations. How similar or how contrasting was your rest of the world five? It was absolutely identical. That was oh. it was oh, here, Arlison, Heikinen, Aluko, Ramirez. Um, there were very few other names that I considered. <laughs> Um, David Trulich, I did think about for the winner at Celtic Park that night. Mm-hmm. Um, Famously scored against Liverpool. That's my lasting memory <laughs> on his debut in a friendly that was marred by the flare that flew over from the Merkland and bounced into the main stand. Those that were there will know what I'm speaking about. <laughs> <laughs> um, Eric Delamo was another name. That yes, he was also under name. my consideration as well, just for that screamer at, at Motherwell alone. Um, but but a good good player uh, as well yeah uh, I suppose um, if if Lewis Miller one of my friends is tuning into this he'll be disappointed I didn't nominate Manuel Pasquale um, for his um, celebration at, at Parkhead well yes 
Um, a few other names that were offered up to me included Zola, Vidal, mm. Maweni, got a shout, not yeah. in any serious fashion. Yeah. <laughs> um, David Grassi, got a mention. Oh, wow. Um, no uh, Jeffrey DeVisher? Um, that, no, Jeffrey, sadly, Jeffrey was, mm. uh, was left out completely. Um, and, and who could forget the wonderful, massive contribution last season of Florian Camberi? Of course, wow. yeah. I but, suppose uh, also notable should be Nikola Vujadinovic for the outstanding own goal category. Um, and obviously Dave Buss as well. Uh, I'm sure people were wondering if he was going to get a nomination. And, you know, I think that's one of the joys of, of doing this kind of thing. Uh, and clearly a lot of the names we've just discussed were not done so in a serious manner. But it, <laughs> it, it's, it's amazing how many names, A, you come up with, and then B, someone else comes up with that you can't actually remember. I mean, mm-hmm. it, it's astonished me how, I mean, not loads, but there have been a few names there that I actually had to go back and, and check up and mm-hmm. say, I don't remember any contribution they made to Aberdeen in any way, shape or form. <laughs> yeah. And in some cases, they didn't play many games, but... Um, yeah. Wow. I wow. think had the um, rest of the world side been sort of all time, they would have benefited greatly because then you could have had like Theo Schnelders, yeah. Atalainen, Hill House in there as well. Um, but the, the last 20 years really limited it. Um, Dyron Dahl, anyone? No. no. <laughs> so so, so which, of, which of those two teams wins the game then? Well, I'm sure those of you that are watching on YouTube or listening are either going to tweet us at RTG underscore podcast. Leave your thoughts in the comments as well. Who you think will win? Are there players that we totally missed, not even discussed uh, on this episode as well? But uh, I don't know. That's going to be close. Um, I think there's just a lot of fight about the GB&I squad. Um, I don't know. I think... If Marcus Heiken and Arneson really pulled it together, they could cause some serious problems. Could you imagine? Yeah, you just need to put it on a plate for, for Ramirez as well. And I suppose folk will say, well, you've got the flair of a Luco in that that rest of the world side as well. But I think in terms of the first five for for rest of the world, it's not so bad. But just the, the, the lack of options was made it really difficult. I, I think, I think the rest of the world team wins against your team, but they wouldn't win against my British team. If I put mm. Shinny and McGinn in for Severin and Nicholson, I think the British team beats the rest of the world. Quite possibly, mm. yeah. I think yeah. that's probably a fair shout. Uh, well, it's as I said, it was a bit of fun for the, the post-season. Um, you know, we've not exactly had much to to cheer about and have a laugh about this season well although we are recording this uh, in March so you never know this could be a bit outdated by the time it comes out if we're celebrating somehow finishing fourth but um, Richard um, an absolute pleasure getting you on and uh, having you adjudicate um, I'm sure that's not how you expect to be spending your Monday night um, reliving or maybe having nightmares of some of the players of of the past but uh, an absolute pleasure um, having you on the show tonight I really enjoyed it, the guys. Thank you so much. Anytime. Yeah, and I'm sure we'll catch up with you again uh, in the future for another episode of Red Tinted Glasses. Thank you very much. Perfect. Thank you. Well, Calm, that was our best five aside from Great Britain and Ireland and the rest of the world. I'm glad and maybe a little bit surprised too that our rest of the world five matched identically to, to Richards, albeit I know he did get the deciding vote. But even then, it was a good bit of fun and I hope everyone that has been tuning into this episode has enjoyed it as well. 100% I very much enjoyed uh, re- recording it. I mean, it was good reliving some of the past players uh, we've had too. Um, I'm sure Darren Dow will be gutted that he didn't uh, make <laughs> the starting five. But uh, very much enjoyable through another uh, an otherwise roller coaster and a bit <laughs> of a downer of a season uh, at time of recording. That is, of course, mm. yeah, and also quite amusing to see Richard's reaction um, to some of the players that we were we were putting forward, and even some of the players being considered as well. So great to have him come on and also be very honest um, as well with his his thoughts o- o- on the players as well. And as Calm said before the episode, make sure if you have been watching the video, leave a like, hit that subscribe button and your thoughts on our teams that we have 
have picked. If you are listening, um, make sure you hit that subscribe button on your audio platform as well. And leave us your thoughts on Twitter. Share that episode with your thoughts. Get your friends involved, very much like Richard did. He, uh-huh. Liam McLeod giving us giving him his best five aside we got our friends involved our well Calum you got your dad involved so why not you set that challenge with your friends as well and see how they compare to what we picked as well I look forward to seeing that I'm sure there'll be plenty of controversy so be sure to let us know